Hey y'all, welcome back. Garden season is in full swing, which means it's time to start preserving things. I have a bag full of cucumbers here. They did not all come from our garden. My parents' garden is also producing really, really well right now. So I'm going to take all of these cucumbers from their garden and our garden, and I'm gonna turn them into pickle relish. Now I'm using my handy dandy ball canning book. This is where I get most of my canning recipes. I love this recipe because it is water bath canned. It is a dill relish. We're gonna use vinegar, we're gonna use dill. It's delicious, it's absolutely delicious. This recipe does call for brining your cucumbers for a couple of hours. Don't forget to like, subscribe, Comment, tell me what you're preserving right now. What are you getting out of your garden? What's your favorite thing to grow and harvest and can? Drop a comment, let me know. Okay, so first we need to weigh out our cucumbers. This recipe calls for eight pounds of cucumbers. So we tear out our scale, of course the bowl and we're just gonna start piling these things in here okay so that's 8.01 pounds so we are going to go with that one of the best things about this recipe is I love that it, you don't have to just use these small little pickle sized cucumbers like if you're making pickles you normally want to use these smaller cucumbers for a better quality pickle so with this pickle relish, you can actually use the bigger cucumbers, you can use straight eight cucumbers, your odd sized cucumbers, whatever. And it works out really well, they taste good. That's a lot of cucumbers. It is, it's eight pounds. Wow! All right, so we have our washed cucumbers. We're just gonna cut off these little ends here. Check them over for bad spots. You don't even have to peel these if they're if you're not worried about pesticides or anything, you don't have to peel them. Just cut off those little ends and they're gonna be just fine. Okay, so like this one has a little bit of a bad spot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that off, make sure I got all of that. And then we'll, as long as it doesn't go all the way through it, I'm just gonna proceed. back here when I'm ready to make the brine. Okay, got everything chopped up. Now it's time to make a brine. Because there are so many in this bowl, I'm gonna put the whole amount of salt and turmeric in here. This one is going to be less than half of this, but I'm going to put half the amount of turmeric and salt in here. It's not going to matter too much because we're going to rinse these off 
later after they've soaked for a bit. And when we do this, we always want to use pickling salts. We don't want to use regular salt. I think it would be okay. It just makes it cloudy or something. But it would be better to use pickling salt if you have it. So this is what we're using. On the small one, we're going to put half the amount of total salt that it calls for, which is a quarter, which would be equal to a quarter of a cup. We also need some turmeric, and it calls for two teaspoons. How's the pickle relish doing? So far, so good. What's this? Hmm? This. Let's okay, now we're just going to cover these with cold water. Just gonna cover these and let them sit here while we go do our errands and when we come back it'll be time to cook it and then we can get it in the jar and get it a uh, water bath canned. I've let my cucumbers sit in their salt and turmeric brine for a little over two hours. Um, I chopped a pound of onions. I used the same thing to chop the onions that I chopped the cucumbers with, so it should all be pretty consistent size-wise. I put it into this pot. I've got clean jars in this pot and this pot getting ready to fill when this is done cooking. So right now I'm going to add the other ingredients. It calls for a little bit of sugar, some vinegar, um, dill I think was the other ingredient. And I'm going to add that to this pot here. This pot. We're going to cook it down and then we'll be ready to fill up our jars and water bath can them. Simple as that. Alright so this is where we have our onion and our cucumber. So you actually, you drain these cucumbers and you rinse them and then drain them again. So it kind of pulls out a lot of the extra moisture. And our ingredients say we need a third of a cup of sugar. Sugar. So I'm gonna make, I'm actually gonna make two substitutions here. And I'm making sure that I'm not making a substitution that will affect the pH of the final mixture. So what it calls for is two tablespoons of dill seed. I'm actually gonna put in a tablespoon of dried dill weed. The ball book calls for white wine vinegar. A, I don't have it. B, I don't like the way it tastes. So I'm just gonna use regular vinegar. I've seen this kind of going around um, like Facebook and stuff lately. You want to make sure that when you're canning with vinegar, it is 5% acidity. That is very, very important. You need that acidity for pathogen control. So it calls for a quart of it. And again, this is how I made it last year and we really, really liked the flavor of it. Last year I used a recipe that was based on this one, but it was for smaller batches. And now we are going to bring this to a boil on a pretty high heat while we stir it. We want that sugar to dissolve. We want those. The onions will cook down. The onions will cook down pretty well as it processes in the water bath. Okay, so while this cooks, I'm going to get lids going and in some hot water for the jars. All right, we're at a good boil here. So I'm gonna turn the temperature down and the instructions say to let it simmer for 10 minutes.
It smells really good in here, by the way. So, we're through cooking. It's time to load up some jars. So I'm kind of out of counter space because I am cooking chicken broth. So we're going to do all this here. I'm just going to move it over to the kitchen table. Let's get everything in place. I'll bring over some jars. So we want to make sure these jars stay hot. All right, so same as when we're canning anything else. We've got our hot jar, our funnel. We're just going to ladle it in. Ouch. Oh, we're going to leave a half inch head space on this one, so a little bit more than usual. Going to remove these air bubbles. Same way we would do if it was jelly. Wipe the rim of our jar. Wipe the rim of our jar here. Grab out a seal and tighten on the lid finger tight so the reason that we want to keep these jars hot is that if we try to put this hot pickle mixture in a cold jar there's a very good chance that it's going to break the jar and it it makes a mess it's dangerous um i did that with some oranges once i had let the the sugar syrup get too cold and then I put it in cool jars and put it in the hot water bath and my jars broke in the water bath which contaminated the whole thing I felt like and it was just a mess that I could have avoided if I had paid attention and done it right. And I forgot to put the air bubble on that one, didn't I? Go, oh, and then I forgot to rinse that one. I'm batting a thousand, y'all. And this is just a clean bath towel. I like to do it on a bath towel because it protects the table, keeps everything clean. This is a bit more tart pickle relish. Um, what you get at the store, I don't know, I, I mostly see sweet pickle relish at the store. This is more of a tart dill relish. So some of these these lids, these some of these rings are a little rusty. That's not that big a deal because I'm going to take them off. I'm not going to store them with the rings on. Now this recipe is written for pint jars and it says it's supposed to make seven pints. I prefer these little half pint jars because we can eat pretty much take one jar out in a sitting. 
if we don't eat it all at one meal, then it's only going to stay in there for a couple weeks at the most. And I like to eat them up pretty quick if I can. I don't want it sitting in the fridge open. Unsealed, I should say. For more than a couple weeks. Alright, I think this is the last one. Get these things over here. Alright, so this one isn't quite full, so this will be our taste test supper. We're going to bring it to a boil. Yeah, that'll happen. That's not nice, Emma. Okay. Alright, so now we need to wait for that to come back to a boil. The small one over here is already boiling. I've got them in there with the lid on. I've got a timer going for them. So as soon as this one comes back to a boil, we will put the lid on it. Set us a timer. We're going to process these for 15 minutes. So I just want to say how handy these stock pots are. These things were cheap Walmart stock pots and they have just been vital for so many things here on the homestead. We use them when we process our meat chickens. I use them for this. I made soup with them. They're just, they've just been super handy. So when our 15 minutes is up, I'm going to take off the lid, turn off the heat, and give it five more minutes before we take them out of the before we take them out of the uh, water. So we're just going to let those hang out for a few minutes, and then we'll take them out to cool. First sets out, and these are already sealing. Let's see, we've got that one sealed, that one sealed, that one, that one, and that one. So we've got two left that haven't sealed yet. But I'm sure that as they cool, they will. Looking good. <laughs> 